Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I am joined by my fantastic co hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. And today, for I think the first time, we've had Michelle on, I think it's the first time, uh, we've uh, got two two wonderful guests today uh, and both have been with us before but separately uh, and both are probably two of my favorite podcasts to be honest that we've done and that's not even a lie um so we've got our wasabi researcher and contributor yuval nothing much uh, and wasabi wallet founder uh, adam fixer um again for the second time so uh, guys how are you both doing today hey guys, uh, good it's good. nice to see you again doing great absolutely and yuval you all good Yep. Awesome. Uh, okay. Good to hear it. No, no worries. That's all. That's all it was. Just checking everyone's uh, happy today. Uh, yeah, I suppose uh, no massive agenda uh, as per usual with our podcasts. But I just wanted to kick us off with the first question: What are you both up to at the? This is a this is a very vague question as well. So feel free to come back to me with whatever. What are you both up to right now? You know, how are things going at Wasabi? What is uh, what is what is it that you're working on at this moment in time? What's got you excited? You know, the same old thing. Just try to create a decentralized, censorship-resistant, a permissionless money. You know. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. And I guess like because um, Adam, we spoke in our first podcast more about how you came up with like, how you end up working on Wasabi and and kind of what you guys were up to at the time, which obviously was probably, I'm guessing, nearly a year ago. Uh, but Yuval, like one thing we discussed a lot about, um, about like what, what, how you kind of came into Bitcoin. And we, we went like super down the rabbit hole with regards to the meaning of it to yourself and to the everyone. And I, I loved it, to be honest. Um, but I suppose one thing we never asked you in the first podcast was, hey, how... Uh, how did you end up getting, I don't think we asked this, how did you end up getting involved in the Wasabi project? I, th I think we kind of touched on it, but like, how did you get involved in it? And like, what are you specifically actually contributing with and working on right now, I guess, is the, is the question. So I think it was, I don't, COVID messed up my uh, sense of time, but um, there was a, a bug in the original, like Wasabi 1.0 had uh, uh, the first version of Zerolink. And then that was changed with the like denomination multiplier. So part of the reason that was changed is because of a, a bug that I found. And that's kind of how I, I got my foot in the door. And um, I had already been obsessed by that point for, I think, well over a year, but like how how you handle uh, arbitrary amounts in coin joins. Um, so once I had my foot in the door um, and um, uh, I, I got people to to listen, uh, I guess it just kind of gradually progressed where I became like, um, th there was the Wasabi Research Club. Um, so that was like a weekly call to discuss like different research papers. Uh, so Adam uh, asked me to to join into to those conversations, and um, eventually from there, like a, a clear direction for Wasabi was uh, kind of crystallized. And uh, I guess by that point, it was uh, too late to get rid of me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We found the bug in the original implementation of of coin joins and uh, and. I, I have to admit, for a while, I didn't really listen to to him because um, because he's he's very very smart, and I didn't actually think that such smart people, you know, exist in this world, and and um, and and I didn't understand. But but he kept persisting, and I realized that uh, oh wow, uh, there are a lot of things things under the surface there that I originally didn't recognize and uh, and we we had a, a longer period of uh, of like um, well you know just exchanging ideas and eventually he, one of his his main idea just become so integral to wasabi wallet which is uh, wabisabi 
uh, right, the whole Wasabi 2.0 stuff that he stick around, I hope, for, for a long time, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to see like um, how different people ended up working uh, on like any of these priv- like whether it's CoinJoin or like Wasabi Wallet itself or like different privacy implementations. It feels like um, it feels like to me, no one ever seems to kind of head out with the intention. It's, <laughs> everyone seems to kind of stumble into it somewhere or another, but then kind of realizes, yeah, I think I'd like to work on this, and then persists. That seems to be anyway how it how it happens. Like um, like some of my favorite people I've met Bitcoin wise have been, I think, all to all strangely enough have all been to do with wasabi um probably my favorite pick was you've got uh like adam gibson yourself adam your vow like obviously uh your podcast is probably one of my favorites um so it's kind of bizarre actually now i think about it uh but that uh, people all seem to have a likable quality but also seem to kind of stumble into to privacy um i guess that's that's the way i feel about it um i suppose um yeah i guess there because obviously you said about wasabi 2.0 and i remember we briefly talked about it i think adam when you were on last time are there any further updates on on what's going on there like is there anything interesting going on anything uh, i don't know anything exciting that you can tell people who are listening sure and i like to poke nothing much with this too because um so in my opinion uh, everything is pretty much ready right we, we just have to put on the final you know um paint at the, at the house and things are, are ready. But uh, some people at the at Wasabi have some, some more things that they want to do. And I think nothing much is the, has, has the most ambitious ideas. So I'm wondering nothing much uh, when, when 2.0. I guess I think maybe parts of the roof are missing in the analogy but yeah there's not a lot of like i I, i'm not uh confident that we're there yet but i can i can see the the end um and i think what it boils down to is we made um a very big decision to kind of take away like Wasabi 1.0 places a lot of uh, responsibilities on the user to use it correctly, to understand what UTXOs are, to understand uh, what coin joins are, and to apply this tool in a way that um, achieves their desired uh, goal, which, I mean, privacy is a very vague goal. You might be doing it for uh, personal safety. Maybe that's safety against your counterparties. Maybe it's safety against your oppressive government. Uh, maybe it's just uh, financial confidentiality. Um, th- there's many, many reasons, um, diverse use cases and so on. And in a way, like Wasabi 1.0 said, uh, okay, here's a, here's a, a tool um, and use it and you can get a, a benefit. Uh, whereas Wasabi, 1, uh, Wasabi 2.0 is um, going for a, a much more ambitious um, as a product, it's it's trying to hide the, those details. It's it's trying to say like, if you just want to use Bitcoin and you want to feel safer, you want to feel like your privacy is um, uh, taken care of. Um, you don't need to read about coin joins. You don't need to learn what a UTXO is. Um, that stuff might help you to use it better, but it's not a requirement anymore. Um, and that's, um, I guess, a, a, like a hugely complicated, like uh, uh, this sort of fractal mess of uh, uh, problems within problems within problems uh, where um, like it's very easy to get lost in the details. And that's exactly what I've been doing for, I guess, well over a year now. Um, and we're, I think we're at the point where we, we have a, a clear enough idea of um, what are, or, or at least I have a clear enough idea of what I think um, is like a minimally viable thing. And uh, the path to there uh, seems uh, illuminated. Like it, 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 there's, uh, there doesn't seem to be like any huge uh, surprises lurking. Um, and over the last year, we've uh, some, some, th- some challenges uh, uh, were discovered as surprises and some challenges were uh, possible to anticipate. Uh, I had a lot of um, 
uh, I think I was much more pessimistic about how difficult the task at hand is. And uh, because of this, I was uh, for a long while uh, fairly adamant about um, certain features being uh, re required. And eventually I became convinced that actually, no, we can wait with that for later. And um, so I guess it's kind of like this process of uh, meeting in the middle. And um, and I think we're, we're, we're almost there. Um, uh, there, there's still a few things that are like uh, keeping me up at night, um, but uh, it, it feels like it's it's definitely within reach now. Yuval, uh, last time uh, you were on, we were talking about uh, Wasabi 2.0 and how you were trying to like abstract away the coin join thing, like you just mentioned. Um, to where like a normal user can can use Bitcoin without having to worry about that. And then also when we interviewed Paul Pewey from Edge Wallet, like their strategy is kind of that too. Like they're trying to incorporate, I guess, uh, certain privacy features, but they want like their main thing is the user experience and abstracting it away. So um, how, how are you guys improving on this? Like will a, a user have to choose UTXOs and stuff like that still uh, with coin control? Or is that just going to be like, you're not going to see it. It's happening behind the scenes. So the problem is that uh, right now, uh, people want to use Bitcoin, right? Like there is a Salvador, a whole population of, of people just just gets on to use Bitcoin, right? And and what, what are they going to do? Well, they are not going to use the Sabi wallet. They are not going to use Bitcoin core. They are not going to use anything not even a non-custodial wallet they will use TO or other custodial wallets because you know what it actually comes down to is to communicate value to another person and that's that's what they want and they don't want to go into the details so if they 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 look at something like wasabi wallet then it's a uh, is gonna be like, what the heck is going on here? I have a bunch of coins, a rows of coins. Um, I want to receive money, send money. It's 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 different because we expose concepts to the user. Those I don't actually want to say that it was uh, necessary to expose them for zero link, uh, but certainly the implementation of the wallet was much faster because we exposed the coin list and and, and some kind of stuff. Um, you know, there there was a paper called from the Tor Tor Anonymity Network developers called um, Usability and Network Effect. Um, anonymity loves company and one of the point in that research paper was that uh, how how bad decisions are made and this is so typical for software engineering that uh, the the designer of the system delegates the decision the researcher of the system delegates the decision to the designer of the system. The designer of the system delegates to the implementers of the system. The implementers of the decision delegates it to the users. So basically, uh, the researcher cannot make a decision. Therefore, it delegates optionality to the users to, down the line to a least capable person to make a decision and the user end up having to choose his encryption method and his his software right like the user is the least capable of doing that now Wasabi 2.0 we if we kind of deep double down on the i want to send money to you and everything else is just fiction notion friction notion so yeah, you well, how does the current one work? Yeah, I would say Wasabi 1.0 delegates to the user the decision of how much to coin join, uh, when to coin join. Um, not exactly what to coin join, because if you queue a bunch of coins for coin joining together, the wallet still picks you know the specific combination. Um, but I mean, if you constrain it, only queue one coin at a time, then now the user is in charge of that uh, as well. Um, it also delegates to the user um, uh, 
the decision of which coins are appropriate to use together in a transaction to send a payment. Um, so th there's a lot that has been externalized in this way to, to end users. Um, and those are difficult decisions to, to make. Um, um, like, I don't know, as somebody who's been like obsessed with the, this like problem space for, um, I guess, four years now, uh, I still feel like intimidated by um, like playing through in my mind, like what the consequences of a specific decision might end up being and whether or not that's acceptable for me. That's a, that's a big, right. It's not like choosing a fee rate. Um, it's, um, it's something that can really um, have like, um, I don't know, go, going back to like my first year of, of using Bitcoin and um, just taking this approach of like, okay, I'm, I'm going to figure it out once I actually start getting some mileage with this thing. And then realizing that um, there was regret that I introduced into my life that I couldn't really anticipate. Like, why did I buy that thing on that day? Why did I use that coin? Why did I use that wallet that hid information that I now think is, is critical? Um, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big burden for users to bear. And I think the, the biggest challenge is that a lot of users don't even realize like so much of the design language of, of Bitcoin wallets is tr trying to emulate the familiarity of PayPal or of a, a bank account or, um, so it, it kind of hides these, um, ultimately very consequential things. Um, and yeah, the, the, I guess with Wasabi 2.0, like uh, we've made a very deliberate decision that the, the experience that we're trying to offer is actually going to be quite similar to this um, problematic um, set of um, uh, concepts of uh, visual metaphors of uh, UI patterns and so on that that Bitcoin wallets have have adopted already, um, but we are going to do it in in such a way where the the coin join stuff is happening in between your payments. So you receive a coin um, from somebody else. the The workflow for that is is quite similar. You generate an address and then they send a transaction and that transaction uh, funds your address with, with a new coin that has some arbitrary amount. And normally in Wasabi, at that point, you would be making a decision. You would you see the little red uh, shield icon that says, um, this is not private, and there would be a label associated with that coin. And then you would queue it, and eventually uh, you would decide uh, that, I mean, that, that coin gets destroyed, it gets replaced with, um, uh, some other coin that maybe has more privacy. And at some point you would be deciding, okay, this is good enough for me to use to make some other payment. Um, and the everything in the middle between those two points, we're now trying to automate and make uh, transparent. So um, um, basically the wallet will need to decide, um, like you, you generate a, a receive address, um, the wallet notices that a payment came in, and then if auto coin join is enabled, um, the sequence of decisions um, leading up to the point where you stop coin joining, including exactly which coins to choose, what um, in, in this uh, new coin join protocol, what output amounts to register, um, when to do that, uh, at what fee rate. Um, all of these decisions um, are going to be now the responsibility of the, the wallet. And in this way, we can hopefully um, make this basically indistinguishable from a traditional Bitcoin wallet, the kind of wallet that does externalize or doesn't even give you the option of choosing privacy. The only user perceptible uh, difference um, uh, in the ideal case would be that you pay slightly more uh, in fees. Um, and um, that's, yeah, yeah that, that, that's our goal, uh, I think. Adam, do you agree? Yes, exactly. So it's going to be just an, any other Bitcoin wallet. 
in terms of user experience, but with privacy. There's like privacy baked in. Um, it makes sense because we, I mean, I personally, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we're kind of at this muddy point where we're going from early adopters to Bitcoin into early majority. It feels like we're kind of at that like level now where it's starting to switch. And obviously at that point, there's only going to be so many people who are willing to use like a uh, more complex, more uh, bare bones, but like more customizable option when it comes to privacy and sending and receiving Bitcoin. Um, do, are you guys going to have a a switch or anything that like will allow people to turn off and on? You know, you know I mean, like, are you going to have like the ability for people if they really want to, to then kind of get that Wasabi 1.0 kind of experience out of the new Wasabi? Or is that just going to be like, hey, look, we've we've made X, Y, Z decisions for a reason. Like it will be private. It will, you know, what, how's that going to go? Is that, is it, which way is it, which way are you going to go? Is it kind of going to have a switch sort of thing? Or is it going to be um, just, you know, baked in, that's it. You get what you get. So actually for existing wallets, uh, you know, because people are used to a specific user experience, so we are not going to completely take that away. So existing wallets will default to to the to the manual coin join experience. But every new wallet created in Wasabi is going to have the automatic coin join in the background, and of course they can turn it off. Maybe there will be an option at wallet creation to turn it off, I, I don't know. But uh, we're not trying to like, you know, force the users that, hey, uh, you used it this space so far and now you you have to use it this, this other way. Try to make the transition much more graceful, right? Um, I mean, okay, so this was also an interesting decision that we made that, uh, okay, so everything right now is completely manual. I have to manually do this stuff. And taking away this manual configurability um, and only implementing, let's say, 70% of the, of the existing uh, features. So the coin list becomes uh, clusters. Uh, no, never mind. The, the, the point is that taking it, this functionality away is, is a is a big decision, right? But what we recognized is that, well, you know, if we, if we, if it's not possible to abstract away the privacy stuff from Bitcoin, then Bitcoin is never going to be private, right? Because that's just what people want. They want simplicity. They want the software that they are using to to drain their brain as little as possible and have other brain power for other stuff in their life, right? Also, if I may add, all of the users who are willing to spend the brain power and uh, they would be much better served by having a larger user base to uh, share privacy with. So- For everything, uh, everyone has there is joy in market. <laughs> well, even if you're, like an expert user, if you have a much larger pool of users, um, you could obtain much better privacy, even if the tool doesn't give you um, like fine grain control over everything uh, for, for exactly the same reason as the, like the anonymity loves company argument, basically. Um, if you make the a privacy tool more accessible to more users then the crowd in which everybody's hiding becomes uh, that much larger and therefore the the requirement to have uh, precise control over everything uh, diminishes like you, you no longer need to to have those um, fine-tuning um, knobs in, in order to, to to get what you want if what you're trying is to maximize how much privacy you get, uh, within a reasonable amount of time for a specific cost, right? Like you, you determine how much you're willing to pay for privacy based on your uh, risk tolerance. And then the tool lets you effectively, I mean, it's just like any other Bitcoin wallet. You just buy block space. Um, and the, the privacy assurance, uh, that's not a direct cost, right? That, that has to do with how you're building those transactions, how you actually utilize the block space. And if you're utilizing the block space that you buy um, in the company of many other users who don't really care about 
maximizing everything and like you know getting every last bit of value out of every virtual byte that you actually pay for um the still the the quality of privacy that you obtain is is going to be much higher for the very simple reason that the crowd in which you're hiding is is much bigger yeah i mean i'm not talking about the non default workflows right i'm uh, concentrating on the default workflows cuz that's relevant for most of the people are you guys familiar with mercury wallet I, I think it's a wallet that uh, just implemented uh, Ruben Thompson's state chain swaps, I think they're called, where you trade private keys trustlessly. Um, do you guys have any plans to implement something similar into Wasabi, or is uh, your focus mostly on on the Xiaomi and Coin join? I think that that has a wonderful potential for uh, synergy between the two like privacy technologies. Um, at the lower level details, the Wabi Sabi protocol um, makes it possible to to register an arbitrary output type. So uh, even though we're not doing like making use of that um, uh, initially, like it's just going to be paid to pubkey hash. Um, in principle, there's no reason why you cannot um, generate state chain coins uh, as outputs of coin joins, and why you could not. Uh, withdraw your uh, state chain coins from like into a coin join transaction in order to obscure the the path of where the the money is going. There's some nuances there with um, like state chain transfers are not um, like they never touch the chain, and uh, the outputs on their own are. Um, uh, they, they appear at least with Mercury's implementation that uses. Um, not what Ruben Somson originally proposed, which, uh, if I remember correctly, relies on uh, like something like Sigash no input. Um, this uses a, a slightly different approach, um, and the um, the on-chain footprint is going to be um, a lot more covert. So when you see a coin join transaction, everybody knows that's a coin join transaction. Um, when you see a, a, a state chain deposit or withdrawal, there, there's plausible deniability there. So um, I think that there's a different use case. Um, but even so, for, for users who are served by both, um, it would make a whole lot of sense to use both. Uh, and um, this also has a very like positive sum um, outcomes. Because if every output of a coin join could have potentially also been swapped between like being created and being spent, um, like there's um, a much stronger like fungibility there. Um, and um, it also interacts in a, in a nice way. So for, for state chain swaps, you need to use um, uh, outputs of exactly the same value, because otherwise, like one user is is effectively paying another user. Um, so the approach that we've taken with uh, the uh, Wabi Sabi coin joins is to standardize uh, some of the values, um, and I think that that's also going to be um, uh, quite helpful. Like the the default way a, a coin join output appears uh, would also make sense if what you're trying to to create is a swappable. Uh, state chain coin. Um, so, um, yeah, just to summarize, uh, on a technical level, the integration is possible. I think, in terms of the benefits to users, there's very good reasons to integrate. And um, uh, it's not on the agenda right now. Um, uh, but, like, in the future, I would very much like to see the the flexibility of the protocol um, used to, to do this and, and other similar things as well. So. Um, uh, coin swaps could integrate with this uh, lightning channel funding um, with dual funding. It gets even more interesting. Um, so th there's all sorts of uh, potential for, um, um, I think a, a good way of um, looking at it is, is every one of these layer two protocols still needs to anchor somewhere on, on chain. Um, and it's not strictly better to always do that in a coin join because that's an overt thing. Um, but it does make a lot of sense in some cases. And uh, I think if it's normalized, if it's not treated as sketchy, right, 
to to protect your own privacy like if that's just a normal thing that everybody does then in principle um like the way i think the future should look like is uh blocks that just contain giant coin joint transactions and everything else all of the payment technologies all of the uh like layer two privacy solutions uh smart contracting stuff that all like anchors in this like much more fungible uh basis and there's there's kind of a, like a nice meme which is um bitcoin is fungible right it's it's fungible at the satoshi level inside of transactions where the problems with fungibility arise is the the transaction graph and the the fact that we heuristically identify transactions as representing the actions of a, of a single user um, if we can let go of that assumption and let the, the protocol evolve, um, no changes are necessary at the consensus level to have perfect fungibility. Or, or maybe not perfect, but almost perfect. Um, and the extreme case is just imagine if every single block is literally just one giant coin join um, and like nobody knows how that was constructed because the, the details of how that was negotiated was um uh it's it's not a consensus protocol um that's still bitcoin and um i think that future can be realized and um i think it's it's more of um like a uh i guess a, a political thing right this like use it or lose it sort of proposition if you if you don't if, if bitcoin users don't assert that they deserve privacy and fungibility um, then at some point the absence of thereof is going to be normalized, and um, I think the the project will will have failed on, at least on some level. Um, Adam, um, this question is for you. How simple do you think that Wasabi Wallet can be? Um, I realize that I realize right now that you guys do not have um, mobile um, interface for users. How how simple do you think how simplified do you think that Wasabi can be, especially when you when you consider that I saw someone on, on a video where um, I don't know his name, but he said that most people are idiots, uh, retards, and I kind of agree. You know, the rest of us are just you know plebs and normies who don't have no regards, you know, for privacy. And how how <clears throat> how far are you willing to go to ensure that people can have um, privacy at their level? Do you think that, okay, um, <clears throat> this is how far we're willing to go. If you consider privacy important enough, then you would meet us at that point. Or do you think that, or do you think you can simplify it enough for them? Or, or do you think that, or is, can you do that? <clears throat> are there trade-offs that, you know, you would have to, you know, are there things that you have to, you know, compromise on to give them some sort of, you know, privacy? Yeah, I have no, no doubt in my mind that, uh, a privacy Bitcoin experience can be just as simple as any other Bitcoin wallet or even simpler if the UI designers are really good at it, right? Uh, what I'm, um, I have uh, concerns about the long, long term is more like the cost of privacy. Um, the user experience is, is, is probably going to be like as, as grandma friendly as you can imagine <laughs> i'm still still stuck on the not stuck sorry i'm still uh, thinking about the last the last question um before for jerry's and it's like uh, you were saying that it's like a use it or lose it kind of uh thing which i think you're right um but i guess would you do you not feel that maybe the the onus is probably more on different wallets out there and like owners and of wallets and 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 kind of the people because i feel like um especially as we do enter this early majority from the early adopter stage uh do you do, do you f i i feel as if people a lot of people who are getting to bitcoin or using bitcoin surely probably more people now using bitcoin more people probably don't understand half of how it works than than the people who do right like we're probably at that point now where i'm going to guess 75 percent people probably don't understand much on how bitcoin even works probably don't even know what utxo is uh that's my guess um so maybe i i feel like the onus is on really people who are, are designing and, and creating wallets 
rather than on the user because i think the users probably don't know right like it'd be good for users to scream for privacy but um they don't really know a lot of people think bitcoin's anonymous anyway <laughs> like a lot of people don't know about it think it's not anyway so is it is it worth you know we try and do a campaign to you know force not force but you know to incentivize or, or to put pressure on designers and creators and hosted wallets and and other things to actually implement coin join I, I don't know what your thoughts are but I, I, that's where i feel like the onus is actually is on like people designing wallets people who have the ability to implement coin join but aren't or maybe even have a button right for the user to say do you want to pay this much more of a fee but your transaction will be more private whatever and people at least the user can decide i don't what, what do what do you what do you both of you guys think about that i don't know if it's uh if you'd agree or not if i mean tie that to jerry's question I think it boils down to priorities. Uh, like Bitcoin is a very hard system to work with. First, you need to spend realistically several years like understanding what it even does, how it works, how to, to use it, what are the like the the flaws, uh, how you work around those flaws, etc. And the coin join stuff for a mobile wallet. Um, so th there's a, a I guess a spin-off version, uh, Chaincase. So this is an iOS wallet that's built with uh, the Wasabi 1.0 code, uh, but with a new UI. And uh, the guy developing it, uh, Dan Gould, has been, uh, like, his experiments are, I think, quite successful. Um, uh, I haven't used it myself. I have no iPhone. Um, but my understanding is that uh, it works quite well, although it's not... Um, the the approach to constructing the coin joins is a little bit different than Wasabi uh, currently does. Um, but the main challenges that he's been facing, I think, are, well, how, how do you deal with things like uh, iOS restricting how you run background tasks because of the, the battery issues? So, like, now you have this super low-level thing, right? Like, the, the battery management code is restricting how much time your app gets to use. And here, like, at the, a very high level, uh, like you need to run coin joins um, through Tor within some time window where all of the users are interacting with each other through the server. How do you bridge those two things? It's it's almost like it's got nothing to do with the coin joins, right? The, the challenges are about the environment for, for which you're developing. And, um, and I think tying that back in, into your question, the, the, like, I think most wallet developers would probably not, like, if they've decided to spend their time on Bitcoin, then they probably um, have um, political or ideological opinions um, about fungibility and privacy and censorship resistance that are uh, very likely to be compatible with uh, like I, I think it's it's very unlikely that there are um, wallet developers out there who think that the best thing for Bitcoin is to integrate KYC into every layer or something. Um, and the challenge that they're up against is they want to provide value with the features that distinguish their their wallet. Um, and you cannot really have privacy in a robust and meaningful uh, way integrated into a wallet without making that a, a primary priority. Um, and in order to do that, you need so much support code. Like uh, I think one of the things that is is often like neglected in discussions about Bitcoin privacy that Wasabi uh, 1.0 already did very comprehensively is how do you interact with the Bitcoin network? How do you discover your your coins on the blockchain uh, as a as a light client? Um, how do you broadcast transactions privately? Like even Bitcoin Core um, has uh, some serious flaws with regards to that. Um, so I, I think my best hope is for um, uh, in, in particular Taproot really uh, ties into that that as the ecosystem progresses and we go into this like second or third generation of, of wallets where um, a lot of the lessons from the past have been kind of um, so like first there were just private keys um, and then we started having like um, much more of a light client uh, focused um, like approach 
uh, we had uh, uh, BIP32 wallets, so uh, hierarchical deterministic wallets. So you only needed to back up one seed uh, for an entire collection of addresses, and the address reuse issues were were mitigated by that. And, um, and this is evolution has been like really slow. Um, and the, I think the reason is it's slow is that it's just really hard to to take care of of everything. And what I'm kind of hopeful for um, in the coming years is that um, increasingly wallet developers will build abstractions that they can share. Um, and uh, this is kind of what Wabi Sabi is, is uh, I guess, intended to be in the very long run. It's, it's a very general protocol that you can use in, in different ways and integrate into a client in, in different ways. Uh, of course, that will require the rest of the ecosystem to, to uh, either re-implement what we do or, or um, uh, be able to uh, reuse what we're building right now, and that that's not a priority uh, currently. Um, but like I, I think as an ecosystem, we need to reduce the the uh, the barriers for developers to um, be able to consider privacy a goal, something that is in scope for their wallet, um, even if that's not their main priority. And um, like take any like lightning node, um, uh, like in the last podcast, I said uh, like lightning is not for payments. Um, I, I kind of like wish I hadn't said that in that way because what I actually meant was 10, 15 years down the line, I think the lightning network will still be around, but it's not going to be the technology through which like you buy a coffee. Uh, I think it's going to evolve into like a settlement network sort of thing. So um, like right now, Lightning developers are dealing with a complex coordination problem uh, with a, a, a layer two protocol that's uh, constantly evolving, that's constantly anticipating future soft forks and how we can use them. And there's just not enough time to get all of the details right. Um, and for this reason, Lightning privacy uh, has has kind of uh, been relegated to to a secondary priority right now. It's just like what we're trying to. We uh, I'm not involved in that, but like what um, Lightning developers are trying to do is is make it a usable payment technology for the next like five years or something. Um, and similarly with with like mobile wallets, um, the 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 challenges are just so. Um, uh, uh, they they accumulate and they add up. Um, that it's it's very hard to uh, to criticize people for not building privacy into their their wallets right now. Um, I hope that made sense. How does the recent Taproot soft fork like impact uh, what you guys are doing? I've I've heard things from other people that like Coin Swap is going to become cheaper than a normal Bitcoin transaction, and like the increased uh, smart contract capabilities that Taproot's going to uh, unfold for Bitcoin, like, is that going to impact your work with Wasabi? It shouldn't matter that much. Uh, I think this is a, a soft work that um, mainly uh, makes it much, um, it removes the conflict between having complicated policies as a sort of last resort or complicated smart contracts. Like now you no longer need to pay for that upfront. Uh, you only pay for it if you use it when you need to use it. Um, and for coin joins, this doesn't really make a difference, right? Like um, uh, th th there's no barrier, like we can integrate Taproot uh, in principle, like right now already. Um, the main argument not to do that is that um, it's just not widely used yet. There's there's gonna be some, you know, if, if now Wasabi uh, will force a back 32M address for data taproot uh, like output. Uh, exchanges are not going to support that yet, and that's good. But like in time with adoption, I think it's going to be a, like a very natural step forward, and something that's going to uh, be much more relevant for how you integrate um, like layer two protocols. Uh, so if you could like pair your Lightning node with Wasabi. Um, and um, instead of having a Lightning node like manage its own wallet with UTXOs, um, it was just like an RPC-based thing. So like scan a QR code or something, the two applications start talking to each other, and the the Lightning node asks Wasabi like, "Hey, I need to fund a channel," um, and then Wasabi does that through CoinJoin. Um, that would be a very nice thing to 
to um, to have. Um, and I think demand for that will only materialize once Taproot is, is widely used. Um, so um, yeah, short answer, it shouldn't really affect things, but I mean, it will affect things indirectly. Uh, I don't know if this question might make sense. Um, like I said, I am a retard. And, but I want to ask, what, um, this is to you, Val. What improvements do you think are made to Bitcoin, maybe on the protocol level, or maybe do you think, um, maybe not hands-on um, in, uh, improvements, maybe do you think the, the developers should like scale back on the amount of you know, um, soft forks that they do? What improvements do you think are made that will make the work on Wasabi easier? I don't think any, any of the soft forks um, that are currently kind of in discussion, um, I think they're all orthogonal to coin joins, apart from cross signature input aggregation, which is uh, like not as far as I know that there aren't any concrete proposals um, yet. So um, I think for the same reason that Taproot will affect things uh, indirectly. Um, much more generally than CoinJoin, uh, privacy and fungibility will benefit a whole lot from uh, SigHash no input or uh, any prev out. Um, so a BIP 118. Um, um, and that is fundamentally, I think, a, a scaling technology. And, and the other kind of soft work that I'm excited about is um, like anything. So technically, that's already enough to achieve covenants. But I think we could uh, get something even more interesting where in the future, um, I, I honestly believe that most people will not be interacting with uh, UTXOs exactly. Like you will have one or two UTXOs that are you own a stake in. Um, and what you actually have is a virtual UTXO that if everything proceeds correctly, um, that thing never materializes on chain. It, there's never a transaction broadcast that spends or funds it. Or, um, but the possibility of being able to to use it uh, on chain, um, that like that should be enough to actually be able to to transact. Um, and and that kind of like far off future is is uh, much more privacy friendly, much more fungibility friendly. Um, and so like the, the fates of these things are, are kind of tied. Like I, I think Bitcoin will need some additional soft forks in order to actually succeed in, in, uh, uh, like realizing its, its potential. Um, but I don't, I don't see like direct, um, um, like a, 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 apart from cross signature input aggregation, which kind of changes the incentives. So all of a sudden it becomes sensible to use coin joins for purely as a cost saving measure. Uh, whereas right now um, it's, it's always going to cost you at least a little bit more. So you, the, the only plausible reason to use coin joins right now is um, for privacy. Um, and I, I think that's the only thing that will be directly affected, but the indirect effects are, are in, in some sense much more important because that determines what users will actually um, want, right? How, how they actually make, um, use this thing to transmit value to each other and um, how, how they define um, what threats they're, they're, um, uh, they need to, to account for and um, uh, what security um, it, it provides. So, um, yeah, I, I hope that's a, a satisfying answer. If coin joins become cheaper, wouldn't that be a massive incentive for like wallet uh, developers to just implement privacy by default? Yes, but then I, are they implementing privacy or are they implementing coin joins for cost savings? Uh, I think the the best case scenario is that well, there's no difference, right? Let that what you like that that yes, by by implementing this cost saving measure, they would be implementing privacy by default. Uh, and in a sense, layer two protocols also kind of do that, right? They they hide the, the details of individual transactions, but the raison d'etre of, of Lightning right now is to allow you to amortize, to, to make a whole bunch of individual economic transactions with much better finality guarantees uh, and, and aggregate all of those together 
uh, so that like in principle, um, you can pay a fixed cost for an, an arbitrary amount of uh, activity. Um, I, I think it's a matter of definitions. Like are, are they building privacy by default or are they just um, like economizing the, uh, and, and yes, the best outcome is is for both of those to be the same thing. My last question is, can you expand a little bit on your um, idea about virtual UTXOs? That sounds extremely interesting to me. So I think the term was, uh, or at least the way I was introduced to it is uh, Jeremy Rubin's work. Uh, so you can go to utxos.org. Um, and um, he has a, a whole bunch of um, cool ideas there. And I think specifically the term virtual UTXOs uh, is referring to um, congestion control trees. Um, so this is the idea that like if you have like a thousand users at an exchange and they all withdraw, um, well, the dumb way to do that is like Coinbase was doing in the 2000. Uh, 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 17 like high fee events, which is uh, you just write a shitty Ruby <laughs> wallet and uh, ignore coin selection entirely and externalize the cost to your users. Uh, the next logical step after that is uh, batching. Um, but if you have covenants, well, um, now the exchange can just create a single output, which guarantees every user the ability to eventually have an on-chain coin in the UTXO state. And the reason that that's guaranteed is because um, the the rules of that output constrain it so that um, it, it must be so. Um, however, there's a cost associated with it. Um, and the I think the trick is you don't, like the lower your time preference uh, for obtaining that final output, um, the higher the likelihood that other users will pay the fees for you. Um, and that's kind of the uh, idea behind congestion control trees. It's it's a whole like tree of transactions where, uh, let let's say there's like three users uh, in a in a virtual UTXO. Any one of those could be the first to broadcast a transaction that spends it, and the resulting outputs of that transaction are going to be still like three coins spendable by the three users. Um, but like Alice, Bob, and Carol, like each of them has a distinct transaction uh, where um, the cost to them is higher. So if if they want to broadcast that earlier, then they're entitled to, um, or they can wait for for some of the other users to do that. With Taproot, this becomes uh, I think much more promising because that gives us the the opportunity to coordinate and say, well, okay, maybe Alice already broadcast something, uh, and that's that's why it's a, a tree structure. So now Bob and Carol can say, well, we, we still have this output, which underneath it are hidden, like both of our outputs. Um, let's open a, a lightning channel between us or something. And, and then they can just spend that output wholesale and um, um, avoid the, the cost. Ultimately, the, the general concept is both still have some number of Satoshis over which they have uh, unilateral control. Um, and, and that to me is a virtual UTXO. It's, 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 it's control over uh, an allocation of, of Satoshis with a lot of different ways of actually realizing it. Um, and there's a related um, mailing list post by, uh, I think, Antoine Riard uh, or Gleb Domenko um, from about a year ago. Uh, they worked on it together, and I, I don't remember who, who posted. But um, uh, CoinPool uh, is this idea where like, you could have something that's conceptually very much like a coin join, except it's just one multi-sig output for all the users. Um, and then if... Like so, instead of having a single transaction with many outputs, uh, sorry, many inputs and many outputs, now you have a single transaction with many inputs and one output, and then that seems kind of dumb. Like, why would you extra? Is is kind of the the aggregated dollar inputs we've created um, a single multi-sig output. We could resolve that and end the protocol where every one of us has an output themselves, or we could just keep going, add more users, build more multi-sig outputs. So spending the multi-sig into coin joins and having that 
represent the actions of multiple users together, that would be a way of um, uh, obtaining much more privacy um, for a, a smaller block space footprint overall. Um, and yeah, the, the concept of a virtual UTXO is just a like very abstract uh, building block of um, uh, control over some sats, which are not yet self-evident in the UTXO set right now. Like um, uh, it's not just I broadcast a transaction to spend that confirmed coin. It's like now I need to think about a whole sequence of transactions and, and how they interconnect and and that's a lot of complexity, but it's complexity that we can afford to do because it's it's off-chain coordination and it relies on co cooperation. It's not a global consensus system that inherently has uh, scaling issues. I uh, I had uh, I'm wary of time, but I've got one one question I wanted to ask. I think it's probably better for Adam actually to answer. I'm guessing, although I'm not entirely certain. But you mentioned it as well, Yuval, and and I think Adam, you mentioned it too. Is is the Lightning Network, right? Like um. Both of you mentioned it, and and Adam, uh, obviously, I, I I saw you out in El Salvador, and if you, you you've been there, and, and you see that there's a lot of use of the Lightning Network going on there. I mean, comparatively to in other areas of the world, and I saw that you guys last month, I think, I can't remember now, uh, but you had like a Bitcoin grant. Um, at least I think it was Wasabi. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I had a Bitcoin grant for um, uh, basically anyone designing a privacy focused Lightning wallet i wanted to know you know as much as you'd be willing to share publicly like what what are your guys because obviously you guys are, are kind of working hard on and focusing rightfully on bitcoin the, the base layer and, and and kind of implementing privacy there but obviously as as time goes on i imagine there's gonna be more and more popularity and use of, of lightning and other layer twos and potentially further layers so what are your guys plans i guess specifically with the lightning network like have you got any Kind of ideas of, of where you want to go over the next couple of years or or, or what are you thinking there and thanks a lot for asking this question because um it, it, it's actually the the grant was announced at the conference uh so two weeks ago but it's a one bitcoin uh, okay so why, why are we what are we doing and why uh, in what we want to build in bitcoin is is a money that that is anonymous, fast, cheap, secure, uninflatable. So basically an idea money, uh, something that fulfills the properties of good money, right? And of course the problem with Bitcoin or, or the problem with all the blockchains is that blockchains don't scale, right? Um, so somehow we have to, we have to create payments. Those are cheap and and fast, and that's not going to happen on the blockchain. So how does that happen? Well, maybe everyone's going to use Coinbase. Maybe everyone's going to use Chivo from the El Salvador government, right? Maybe it's centralized custodial solutions are the solutions to this problem, or because the problem with them is that they compromise on the security property of good money. And what the Bitcoin developers figured out that, hey, we can have this lightning network that does not compromise on the security property of good money. And so we can continue our journey of the future uh, cyber currency uh, longer until not even until the lightning network gets full. Anyway, so my point is that without the lightning network, the feature seems to be for a Bitcoin wallet that it has no business if it does not have lightning network. Uh, however, we cannot have a lightning network wallet without taking care of all the privacy leaks, right? Like how we are doing in Wasabi. So, and that requires uh, um, a decent amount of research. And that's why we created a one Bitcoin grant for Lightning Network researchers. Um, you can go to blog.wasabivalet.io and you can find a grant there. Uh, I, I, I really hope some people would would apply some researchers would apply to this uh, to this grant because we did not actually receive any application yet. But uh, yeah. All right. Well, 
anyone listening, you heard it here, okay? Go apply. I'm sick of this. Uh, you know, don't ignore it, right? It's a, it's a Bitcoin grind. But first off, beyond the the, the Bitcoin that you can be a part of getting, um, you know, there's uh, it's quite important uh, to make sure that this sort of lightning adoption it, it takes takes place in a, in a good manner, I guess, in a privacy conscious manner, at least I think, rather than everyone just using Chivo, uh, you know, around the world or whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, and if you're out there listening and you've got some spare time in your hands and you'd love to learn about lightning <laughs> or you just know already about lightning and you're already capable, go apply, okay? Uh, you heard it. Um, it was, I think it was blog, was it blog or blog? blog.wasabiwallet.io, I think is what you said. Yes. So blog.wasabiwallet.io, okay, head over there. Um, Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I know I'd, I knew I'd heard it or read it or something, but um, I just couldn't remember when it was. I, I, I mean, obviously, that makes sense that it was uh, at the conference. No, I'll, uh, okay, we'll leave it at that. But yeah, anyone out there listening, say check it out, blog.wasabiwallet.io. Uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to say before we, we sign off? Anything else people can do to, to help out or, or, you know, anything else? I mean, obviously, you can check out Wasabi Wallet on Twitter. What else would you guys want to say? Uh, you know what? Let me just zoom out to the big picture we want to build a better money and basically fix the whole system what we have right now and for that we need to make bitcoin cheaper faster and more anonymous without compromising <clears throat> scarcity security and what other properties of good money and i hope uh, that's a meaningful enough uh, goal for 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 people so so keep up the good work, guys. I did think of one last question. How soon is 2.0 going to be released? Is it like right around the corner or are you guys still working on it? I guess we're, uh, we have a internal uh, like agreement for um, a concrete date for like uh, what we've been referring to as like a preview release. So um, something that should really only be used on testnet. So and uh after that we're hoping to nail down like a concrete like release candidate that's something that's uh a little bit like the reckless launch of of lightning so like if you're interested and you feel that you know what you're doing and you're accepting the risk um that should be something that um will do the right thing on on uh, mainnet but like no guarantees yet and after that's solid um uh, then it should be generally like releasable. Um, so for the internal like um, agreement about like dates, uh, I think we've been uh, aiming for uh, uh, like the end of December for this uh, like uh, testnet release that that people should be encouraged to to actually use and not just uh, us or uh, like hardcore users. Uh, more than that, um, I have. Uh, yeah, I have difficulty. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think the the criteria for success or failure are quite subtle, and um, the strategy in general was was um, like we we picked a very very ambitious goal, um, and there were a lot of surprises along the way. Um, so I, I, I don't want to say anything that I will later regret, but uh, I'm hoping it's 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 not uh, much farther now. Um, Adam, uh, do you want to? <laughs> uh, All right, I just want to say that uh, we don't do deadlines; we do estimations. It's uh, because we trust in our 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 developers that they are doing their best work. I mean. How can I not trust them when I find them at 1 a.m. in the office still writing code? Uh, so <laughs> they are really doing their best. And, uh, and I did not have any good, good experience in the past when people tried to, to when I tried to, people told me that this is the deadline and this is when you have to, to be ready for, because I can be ready by then. But, it's gonna be not as good. On the other hand, uh, I would estimate myself doing this thing, be able to do it within two weeks, a complete release, but it will be as 
it it wouldn't be as good uh and and the guys are really into the details of some of the stuff so it'll be it will be fine also maybe one just one neat pick in what you just said is this we had surprises uh i i don't i don't think we had negative surprises actually didn't we always just widen the scope oh this is possible too so let's build it that way this is possible too i don't think any of our initial plans were like oh that cannot be done it's rather the opposite i guess that means i've been uh, doing a good job of uh, hiding all of my uh, anxiety and, and dead ends and <laughs> uh suppressing that unnecessary detail uh for, for me it was quite a wild ride of uh many places like believing that it's impossible or um like thinking of this like auto coin join no utxo support making it economical making sure that edge cases and corner cases are taken care of a year ago i was almost convinced that we would need it's it's not it wasn't about what we could be doing but rather uh things that i thought were necessary to to make this even work um and yeah so for me the last year has been mainly a process of of um convincing myself that we can leave some stuff out of scope for the 2.0 release and still have uh something that that's minimally viable and more than minimally viable like something that actually provides uh value um and and uh, uh meets the the design goals um um so yeah th there there have been like unpleasant surprises and there have been pleasant ones as well more pleasant ones than unpleasant ones but um uh yeah but we won't have coin joints in two coin swaps with the lightning network right definitely not for uh the 2.0 release yeah <laughs> Not coming in a couple of weeks then okay <laughs> that's not a surprise <laughs> it's fair enough um all right cheers guys it's been um been wonderful it's been a pleasure to have both of you back for a second time but together this time uh it's been a cool different dynamic uh to our usual as well which is which is great and uh yeah i've enjoyed speaking to both of you and hearing about uh, wasabi 2.0 i'll be excited to see what it looks like so once the you know official release etc occurs then i'll be um i'll be making a new wallet and checking it out see uh, how it differs because uh, i checked out wasabi i think twice before um i think even used it once twice but anyway uh it was uh, great to chat to both of you and uh it was awesome to have uh, both of you jerry and ricardo here with us as well as per usual uh, and to everyone listening uh thank you very much uh take care check out wasabi on twitter check out the blog uh check out bit refill while you're at it and uh, stay happy have an amazing evening morning afternoon day week month year uh, take care and uh, keep buying bitcoin